Please pray for me now. So Lord, thank you for bringing us back together. Thank you for the month that has passed, holding us in the palm of your mighty hands. Pray, Lord, you would be with all of us this morning as we hear and try to understand the scriptures. And as we come forward to receive the blessed sacraments, the bread of life, Lord, for the next 10 minutes or so, help us be fully attuned to what you would say to us all here today, so that we may be transformed and go into the world and make a difference. I ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. Just 
America. And what's her propensity? We go right back to it like it never happened. But faith is like that. How many of us have been under a CEO? Go on, raise your hand. I know Earl mentioned it last week. And you don't know what a Curcio is, talk to some of those people, their hands up, they're coming to make an appointment with me, and we'll get you to go into one. Uh, I'm just curious, is, who has made a Curcio in the past year? Not a little COVID, but maybe that's not possible. Has anybody made a Curcio in the past two years? There it is, Libby. Isn't it true, because I made my Curcio with my lovely wife back in St. John, the Baptist in Milwaukee, Oregon, it was a co-ed. Curcio. Any co-ed Curcistas out there? Was it, you did a co-ed with Steve? No. So just saying, there is all men and all women Curcios, but then there's a co-ed Curcio, and I guess I was too chicken to do it by myself. So I had my wingman, my wife, because they didn't come with. So we went and we had a powerful experience. I'm just curious, is anybody, was anybody there Saturday night over in St. John's, Milwaukee, in Oregon?
feel I've truly had a bread of life. I feel I've truly been in community. I truly feel closer to God than any place else. So, I'm going to let myself off the hook and say this. Because God is a God of surprises, and uh, I'm a good little boy scout, and I can beat myself up. What was me? Should have been in church, for God's sake, to the preacher. I mean, what kind of example are you set for your kids? You're lazy, you know what? You know what? God doesn't love me any less. That's such a, that's such a mind blowing about following Jesus. He should. He should be keeping score. Some of you are sitting there going, Tom, you, you, don't, you don't want to even know my story. <laughs> how many years I've been away from the church. How, how long I've been slumming it, as the kids say. Some of the things that I've done, Tom, make your hair curl. You want to talk about being a sinner. And there's Jesus again, looking us in the eye, looking you in the eye with that Still beat yourself up about something you did or you didn't do, or you, you said or you should have said, or you didn't say, and Jesus says, Look, he goes, I love you. I'm not asking for a lot here. I just want you to come and see me more often. I want you to come and be with my people more often. I want you to hear the preacher more often. I want you to get the sacraments more often. Because when you do that, everything changes. Now, I don't know what I am on Myers Briggs. That's a perfect segue for my wife to yell out what I am. What am I, sorry? I'm an ENFP. I'm an ENFP. Don't laugh. That's why it's hard for me to keep my homilies under 25 minutes. I'm doing my best. But I'm a, I'm a rule follower and I like to keep score. I guess the better way to put it is I'm a control freak. So, there's still a big part of me that believes that God is Santa Claus, if I'm honest. In other words, I don't like seeing people, you know, pull one over on someone else and get away with it. I'm, I'm all about a big fairness and justice meter. And I get wrapped around the axle and see, frankly, the way we are treating one another in this country and on our fair land. But then, my brother, my God, can I just say, Tom Moore drank Indian beer and smoked cigars for the first time in 10 years with his little brother, one star General Matthew S. Warren. And in the middle of, I think we have transitioned to bourbon. He likes to drink bourbon. And we were by the fire at mom and dad's place in the woods. And uh, we got down to brass tacks about life. I won't divulge some of the things we talked about, but I will divulge this. He said, uh, you should watch this movie that I saw the other day. I said, oh yeah, look, I think he's going to say like Marvel <laughs> or Star Wars. All due respect to my boys and Zachary and everybody else who knows. I love Star Wars. He caught me off guard. Brigadier General Matthew Moore caught me off guard. He said, no, 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 no. It's a, it's a, it's a God film. It's a religious film. Oh, I said, I thought it was bourbon talking. Yes, I watched it the other night. Just check it out. It's called I Can Only Imagine. Has anybody seen it? One or two. I can only imagine you speak into your little remote control. If you subscribe to that kind of thing, it'll come up. And it came up the other night, free of charge. So I watched it with my wife. Without giving too much away, in a nutshell, it's the true story of a young boy who grew up in Edmond, Edmonds, Oklahoma, named Bart Miller. Bart Miller. Bart was in an abusive.
household. His dad was a real SOP. And uh, long story short, Bart went on to be the lead singer for the Christian rock band, contemporary rock band, Mercy Me. And their triple platinum debut album, the song on there that threw them over the top of the moon with recording contracts and money and all that comes with that was the song I Can Only Imagine. Here's the upshot. He was so abused by his dad, he had ripped his dad off, didn't want anything to do with him, wish he was dead. And God, like God does, always shows up and surprises us. There is that song we sing, and you know it, and I know it, and I can't get through it, and you can't get through it, that a former slave trader who was a good Anglican named John Newton wrote to this day, which moves the human heart like no one can. Well, right behind Amazing Grace, and I've listened to it now about 30 times, is the song, and I'm not going to sing it. Famous last words. Is the song, I Can Only Imagine, which Bart wrote for his dad. And this is what I'm getting at. If you're sitting here and you're listening to me, and there's still a part of you that thinks that is so unforgivable that not even God in heaven will ever forgive you for what you've done or not done. I want to say to you unequivocally that is a lie. That is, that is the devil's language. That is the enemy talking. And I want to just plant a seed this morning for some of us who are struggling with forgiveness, with God's love in our life, or here it is, and it's hard. Believe me. And you know what I'm going to say. When it's someone who is hurt or betrayed or abused, you. There is only one hope. There is only one balm of Gilead. There is only one bread of heaven. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who looks in every human heart. I was lost, and now I'm found. That is the game changer. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. You can't get that on a Fred Meyer shelf. You can't get that in a cup of Starbucks, Joe. You can't get that on Netflix. You can't get that at a Timbers game. You can't get that at an Oregon State football game. You can't get that. You can only get that sacrament, literally, right here in 10 minutes' time at this altar. And if you're looking for it, and you've been looking in all the wrong places, I'm here to tell you, all you got to do is get up and walk 20 feet and put your hands out. And you get the bread of life. You get the guarantee. And this sounds crazy. When I held some of your babies in my arms on their baptism day, and I poured that water over their head, and I marked them as Christ's own forever, I'm here to tell you, if you and your children or your grandchildren are wayward, and they don't know the Lord because they're in the desert or wilderness time in their lives, you just remember what I say to you when I say to you to the pastor, whether it was me or Bob or Jim or Greta or whoever, who like marked as Christ's own forever. That is efficacious and it means something. So when Christ says to the crowd and he says to us this morning, you're looking for a miracle? He goes, I'm the miracle. You're looking right at me. I'm the bread of life. Stop looking everywhere else. You're not going to find it anywhere else. You're only going to find it in church. 
in church. And now your ancestors and my ancestors in heaven are cheering because I'm going to get personal and I'm going to wrap this up. And it's not because my two boys are in the back. I've said this to God pretty much every day. And I'm stealing it from Dr. Russ Parker, who some of you know, and if not, I'm going to bring that brother back for a healing weekend some February very, very soon. You know the story. His son went far away from the Lord. And Russ prayed to God every day. Lord, may Joel, long after you, Jesus, so much that he goes out looking to find you. As my boys are listening and as you are listening to me, my prayer for every one of us, including myself, in the times we live in, is for me to miss and for you to miss Jesus so very much that you go out looking for him. And the good news is, this is where you find him. In church. In church. It's your world, Lord. You died for it and rose for it. 